Let's see how we can achieve code reuse using inheritance. Suppose that we have a class called basic calc with add and subtract methods. Say return a plus b and one more method say int subtract with parameters a and b return a minus b. Now, this is a simple class with two methods add and subtract. Now, let us create object for basic calc. Say b calc 1. Now, we can call add and subtract methods through b calc 1. say b calc 1 dot add of 10 comma 20. And also one more b calc 1 dot subtract of say 10 comma 20. Now, this is fine. We call the add and subtract methods here. If you see the output, you get 30 and minus 10. This is fine. Suppose you are designing a class called scientific calc. Here, you can see that we need the functionality of basic calc with some extensions. Instead of redesigning the entire functionality, we can make use of existing functionality. How can we do that? We can say extends basic calc. With this, scientific calc has inherited the functionality of basic calc. Even if we do not add anything to scientific calc, we still get the basic calc functionality. Let us see that. Let us create an object for scientific calc. Now, you can see that we can call the add and subtract methods through scientific calc object. Now, the question is, did you define add and subtract in scientific calc? No. Then, how can you call these methods? This is because scientific calc extends basic calc and hence it inherited the properties of basic calc. What we can do is, we can also add more methods to this class. let us say double sign with degree as parameter. Now, let us convert that to radians that is degrees into pi by 180. Now, we got the radians. Now, what we can do is we can call math dot sign and pass the radians to get the sign value and return it. Now, scientific calc has three methods now, add, subtract and sign. Now, we can call sign method through scientific calc object. Now, when we create object for scientific calc, we can call basic calc methods as well as scientific calc methods. But through basic calc object, we can only call add and subtract. Let us put a break line just to separate the outputs. Now, let us run the program and check the outputs. Let us see what we have done. We have add and subtract functionality as part of basic calc. In case of scientific calc, because it extends basic calc, it inherited the functionality of basic calc and added sign method. This is what we call inheritance. 
and it forms an easier relationship between the classes. That is, scientific calc is a basic calc. What is the advantage you get from it? Let us see that. Basic calc B calc 2 equal to new scientific calc. Can we do this? Yes. This is because B calc 2 is a reference variable. It can point to any object of type basic calc. What is expected is a basic calc object. What is given is a scientific calc object. Because scientific calc is a basic calc, this assignment is valid. The reverse is not true. If we say scientific calc as calc 2 equal to new basic calc, in this case, the assignment is not valid. This is because the given object cannot handle all the calls from S calc 2. For example, if we call sign, then the basic calc object cannot answer it. And in short, when basic calc object is expected, we can also supply the derived class object that is scientific calc object because it forms an easy relation. And also, Derived class object can handle all the calls made through base class reference variable. Now, the other point is we cannot call the sign method from bcalc2. Let us try it. Let us see bcalc2.sign90. You may feel that this is valid as it is a scientific calc object. bcalc2 is of type basic calc. It can only refer to the members of basic calc because compiler only knows the type information and not the object. Hence, members referenced through bcalc2 should be a member of basic calc. Now, if you know that the object is of type scientific calc, then you can safely typecast it to scientific calc and then call the sign method. Problem rises if the actual object is not of type scientific calc. You will know about instance of operator in future lectures which help you identify the object before you can cast it.